Ooh, look how modern and surreal. Yes, this is the ballroom where, where we'll be imparting solid background knowledge to you, the idiot, whether or not we know anything at all about what we're talking about. And generally speaking, we don't. Now, the thing you need to know about the modern economy is that it is, in fact, the largest coordinated experiment in the history of mankind into the theory of quantum superposition. It is a practical demonstration of the famous thought experiment Schrodinger's cat, in which the cat is either alive or it's dead inside the box, but with the box closed and the cat unobserved, it is actually neither and both. The economy works on the same principle. All the money that we talk about on the news, all the money that's apparently just disappeared down a great big plug hole, None of it existed in the first place. It's make-believe. The people on Wall Street, in Hong Kong, and in London might as well be trading Monopoly money, or pebbles, or sexual favours, which incidentally are likely to become quite a valuable currency come the collapse of civilization by this time next year. The entire global economy, particularly stocks and shares, basically consists of pricks in suits trading imaginary money for little abstract pieces of companies. Nothing tangible trades hands until after the exchange is closed and the pricks decide to spend their non-existent money on things to make their penises look larger, such as aeroplanes or islands, or the moon. At which point, the money is acted upon and actualizes, like the cat when the box is opened. So, come this time next year, when you're queuing up for tiny morsels of yeast, or gulping down crumbs of cheese in between guttural sobs, or simply lying in a graveyard hoping someone will mistake you for a corpse and just bury you. Just remember it's down to a bunch of pricks who just had to open the box and find the dead cat. At this point we'd like to remind viewers that while what you're watching may seem half fast, we are in fact using our entire arses. The problem is not a lack of effort, it's a lack of talent. Now, being as we are a satirical news-related show thing, at least in theory, it might be worthwhile just to consider what side of the political spectrum we are in fact on. Of course, as we took the piss out of Sarah Palin earlier, in the eyes of many people in the American right, we are now a far-left propaganda tool, sponsored by Ward Churchill, George Soros, and Lenin. And rather than talking to you calmly and frankly boringly, I am in fact screaming at the top of my voice directly into the screen, and the only reason I'm not foaming at the mouth is because Movie Storm doesn't have an animation for it. But then those people have been known to say the same thing about the Washington Post, the Weekly World News, and even Fox News at one point for having the temerity to suggest that Dick Cheney shooting a man in the face may have been a mistake. What I'm saying is that these people are twats, and political discourse the world over would be much improved if they were shut inside an echo chamber to jabber at each other until all the oxygen runs out. Live on HBO. So where is this program politically? Well, it's a set-up program, it's nowhere. Having said that, our writer is basically left-wing. In fact, he's a traditional Bevanite socialist, in case he gave a flying fuck. But that's not exactly a recipe for chuckles. Generally, anyone heavily on any side of the political spectrum is going to be less funny than stubbing your toe on the corpse of your mother, albeit in different ways. Hard leftists, like ourselves, tend to be more caring, but they drone on and bloody on until you find yourself wanting to end the horrific plight of the workers by putting this particular one out of his misery right now with your bare hands. Right-wingers, on the other hand, are less caring and, in fact, genuinely hateful. Where the leftists might drive you to a murder-suicide, the right-wingers may inspire a murder-genocide. Which is why most topical humour doesn't take sides, if it wants to be funny. A lesson that Joel Surnow and the other makers of the Half Hour News Hour had to learn the hard way. Although they probably didn't, because they're right-wing pricks, and right-wing pricks never learn anything from their mistakes because they're so bloody superior. 
Of course, if you want to be funny, it also helps to have humour and jokes, which is a lesson we've had to learn the hard way. Being visually interesting might have helped as well. I mean, a man sitting at a desk is still a man sitting at a desk, even if he is all modern and computer-generated. Our excuse, if you're interested and you're not, is that we can't actually use Movie Storm for long periods at a time, partly because our crew is basically a person, and we have to get this out before the news items become out of date, or the global financial crisis makes the internet collapse completely, and partly because our CPU is for shit and starts glowing white hot as soon as the slightest strain is placed upon it. But still, we tried, and that's what really matters, yeah? Right, fuck you then. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. I know it's not very long, but what do you want for nothing? Jam on it? Sorry to take away your all important ten minutes. Wish you could spend doing something more constructive, like watching that fight scene from John Carpenter's They Live twice in a row. We were really trying to entertain you on a budget of zero pence. Oh no, never mind that, you ungrateful little shit. I mean, it's only one person's attempt to amuse himself and hopefully amuse others. It's not like we spent a whole bloody weekend on this thing. I'm Oliver Christian, and that was the world important news. Goodbye.